Uh, greetings. My name is Nathan Woods. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Lethbridge. This is a presentation for DH 2023. Uh, I'm presenting on behalf of the Humanities Innovation Lab and the Humanities uh, Data Inquiry Project, uh, headed by Dan O'Donnell and Barbara Bordalejo, um, and housed at the University of Lethbridge. Uh, the title of our talk for today is The Data Problem in the Humanities, or When Everybody is Special, No One Is. Since at least the turn of the 21st century, we've heard talk of the data problem faced by humanities uh, uh, researchers at one and the same time defined as a problem of scholarly method, of research policy, um, and of research infrastructure development. In this paper, we focus on reimagining this data problem, where our central goal is to recast the problem as a classic issue of variable problem definition variable as it is defined in multiple, perhaps competing ways by different communities of practice. To do this, we build from some preliminary results of ongoing case study research and discuss the important role of the use case when contrasted with a focus on the data type and the corrective role this distinction might play in discussions of the organization um, and conduct of data-intensive scholarship. As this quote from a recent policy report from Ithaca IR demonstrates, the issue of humanities data is cast as a central and urgent question for humanists as they face, in very contemporary terms, the data problem of a, as a feature of research uh, data infrastructure uh, development and use. Although this report specifically addresses the problem of humanities data in the United States, it broadly illustrates in outline the stakes of the data problem as a new condition for undertaking humanities projects, framed by such broad brush questions as how will researchers solve the data problem as a part of their work? What is their perspective on research data management? Have they considered the consequences of research data policy for their research programs? For our purposes, we describe this condition as a resistance to data, variously experienced by researchers as a rejection of the problem, a critical ambivalence, or an acquiescence to the terms of the debate as a foregone conclusion. From the literature, we identify at least three salient positions that have emerged to solve for this condition. A rejection of the idea that humanities scholars uh, work with data at all, uh, second, a position particularly arrayed around the concept of CAPTA, which argues that humanities scholars have a special kind of data. And finally, an argument made primarily by information scientists that humanists do in fact have data, but they don't realize they have data and must subsequently be educated to understand what this means. A position which often entails broad changes to humanities research practices and philosophy of research. Although actively debated, we argue that these positions are not actively grounded in a considered portrait of how humanities scholars actually work. To understand how this condition is experienced on the ground, we employ a comparative case study approach as part of a larger ethnographic project, Humanities uh, Data Inquiry, that looks uh, at the data problem in the humanities from multiple angles by synthesizing multiple sources of data to document and compare how humanities scholars, policymakers, and infrastructure designers conceive of data issues and differentially and collaboratively imagine, build, navigate, and manage humanities and cultural heritage research infrastructures. For this study, we focused on comparative historical analysis of four cases of data intensive, intensive humanities scholarship in North America, concentrating primarily on cases from Canada and the United States. As the study develops, we intend to look at additional cases to compare dynamics in the development and maintenance of data intensive scholarship in additional projects in the humanities, humanistic social sciences, and the sciences more broadly 
and ultimately to extend that to international cases outside of North America. The strength of case study research is that it allows for a detailed, specific understanding of how scholarly practice develops in relation to specific conditions and contexts, and hence provides the material to build inductive comparisons that support robust theory development. We selected cases of data-intensive scholarship based on three criteria. They must be established projects in the humanities with an established record of activity and problem solving. They should be scholar-driven projects originating in scholarly dialogue and problems. And they must involve small data sets designed to represent real-world objects that are either richly curated or involve long-term analysis and development. To construct the case studies, we use a variety of data collection methods, including document analysis, literature review, and interviews, to construct synthetic histories of each project. The cases are then constructed to allow for internal and cross-case analysis using a comparative schema focused on project history, its development over time, data practices, the organization of infrastructure, and contemporary fit to fair and care uh, data assessments. Initial findings from these cases um, and the case studies identify several features which support preliminary theory development that reframes how the expert agency of humanities researchers is conceptualized. These features cluster to a set of interlinked concepts which we characterize as humanities researchers as infrastructure designers, the work of building custom information systems, and translating the use case as a socio-technical fact. Taken together, these concepts sum to the proposition that humanities researchers have worked to design uh, custom information systems, translating scholarly problems into socio-technical systems that deploy humanities data to solve particular problems through, for example, distributed analysis, the dissemination of findings or information resources, or to make humanities data accessible to specific audiences. I highlight one branch of this conceptual cluster, translating the use case as a socio-technical fact in the remainder of our discussion. The notion of the use case has become a ubiquitous tool for understanding how uh, a system can be used to achieve specific goals or tasks. Um, originally developed in software development and requirements engineering, use case modeling is a means of specifying, validating, and eliciting system requirements. The concept has since diffused to other areas of coordinated work where it has come to mean something like a situation or scenario where a system, product, or service might be used. In its formal sense as a type of methodology, a use case model describes communicates and facilitates all the ways a user interacting with a system or product may work to realize a desired end. Seen as a type of socio-technical artifact, a use case model helps to translate system requirements into system design. Here we use the concept of the use case to describe a feature of work shared across our case studies where humanists design custom information systems to address goals or problems. We do so to highlight the cultural work of informally eliciting systems requirements in an ongoing way as part of the work of translating scholarly problems into the design of a project research infrastructure. While humanists may design infrastructure as part of their work, it is important to understand that for our cases, they did not set out to become infrastructure designers. Rather, their project evolved from problems in the context of scholarly or disciplinary dialogue and developed in an improvisational or ad hoc fashion over time as part of the implicit planning of a project, but without utilizing formal procedures to elicit or model systems requirements. The use case in this perspective is developed as a type of dialogue that over time mediates between the goals of the project framed in terms of scholarly problems, a sense of the system requirements often based on ad hoc projections, and the design of a database information system created through on-the-fly problem solving. 
Crucially, questions of humanities data are framed by researchers relative to the development of the use case and system re requirements through the project-specific work of developing a custom information system. This reconceptualization holds implications for how the problem of humanities data is framed. As compared to the sciences, there has been relatively few empirical studies of how humanists work in the wild. For the literature that does exist on humanist work practice, the majority is focused on the information behavior of humanities scholars, often framed in terms of information needs, and hence of humanists as users or consumers of information resources or as clients of information infrastructure. Similarly, while there is a slim literature on the information needs of humanists navigating analog infrastructure, the strong majority of work on humanist behavior is defined by a horizon of concern regarding the role of computers and network information on humanity scholarship. The recent literature on the datum problem in the humanities is in this sense illustrative of this work, where it conceptualizes the expert agency of humanities researchers as potential producers and consumers of data to focus almost exclusively on the question of data type relative to the concerns deriving from the emerging field of digital research data management. While this line of inquiry usefully helps us to understand the types of objects utilized by humanists, it potentially serves to reinforce the notion that data is what can be extracted from humanities projects and ingested into an information infrastructure, rather than the question of how research objects include data, including data, are used towards particular ends. This perspective distorts the full range of expert agency that humanists exercise in their work, crucially casting scholars as users or consumers of information and data resources and research infrastructure rather than as infrastructure designers as our uh, case studies illustrate. To bring us back to the start of the paper and the issue of problem definition, this implicit framing and the evidence base that it mobilizes has consequences for how the data problem in the humanities is defined, developed, and resolved for the field, but also for differing disciplines, subfields, and individual researchers. When viewed from the perspective of data type, Human, humanist scholarly behavior is largely portrayed as consumers of scholarly resources engaging with research infrastructure, often framed in terms of research data management, but increasingly in terms of digital collections as clients. When viewed from the perspective of the use case, humanist work in data-intensive research involves infrastructure development, and researchers are thus positioned as data users and developers in addition to any role they may play as clients in more formal or centralized research infrastructure such as data repositories or through interaction with field-level standards. Further directions in our research at Humanities Data Inquiry will continue to complicate the data problem along two fronts, one empirical and one practical. First, at the empirical level, we continue to develop our comparative studies of data-intensive research in the humanities which we will begin to integrate with interview data in the coming year. Here, the goal is to understand the diversity of humanist expert agency by documenting for both analog and digital scholars their work and data practices. This empirical work will help to complicate how we think about the history of humanities research infrastructure, specifically providing a more nuanced portrait of what innovation patterns in the design and use of humanities research infrastructure have looked like over time. Second, informed by this research, we are designing a series of structured dialogues between humanists, RDI developers, and policymakers that center the issue of diversity of infrastructural practice questions of methodological human humility and recognition of the value of humanities infrastructure as it has evolved over time. The goal here is to develop and implement a knowledge base that supports the goal of developing research data infrastructure in the humanities, but that also appropriately shapes the image of humanities and humanist expertise and agency by centering questions of variation, diversity, experimentation, and change. 
Um, if you have uh, questions um, uh, or um, are interested in further dialogue, uh, we would appreciate it if you would reach out either through uh, direct contact using our emails or um, through the Humanities Innovation Lab uh, website or the Humanities Data Inquiry uh, website. Thank you for your attention and uh, for the rest of the panelists and the organizers, thank you and enjoy the conference.